Greetings and welcome back to Photo Justice. For a moment, we're in the Q&A portion of the show now, following up on the show. We just talked about all the fun stuff that you need to connect a wireless microphone to your smartphone properly. And now is where we get to try and answer any questions that might have come up. So again, if you're watching live, which is obviously how we're going to answer your questions, then uh, put your questions in the comments. Make sure you type at Photo Joseph in front of that so that I can see that there is a question and I will do my bestest to answer it. And at the moment here, there's a whole bunch of chit chat, but no actual questions. So I'm just going to take a quick scroll through here and see if any of these actually are questions that people forgot about the Photo Joseph thing. Um, earlier before the show started, we were talking about the HDMI guard for the Lumix GH5. Ryan Holland said, wait, what HDMI guard thing? Yeah, it comes with it. I don't have one within reach, I'd show it to you, but it's a little plastic thing that comes with the GH5 and the GH5S that attaches to the side. It screws into the side of the camera and it holds your HDMI port securely so you can't pull it out accidentally and also so you can't bend it side to side, which is what one of my friends did and broke his. Don't do that. I've actually done that too, but not on the GH5, on an older one with a little part. Anyway, that uh, adapter comes with the GH5, so make sure that you, uh, you check that. Look in the box, see what's in there. Uh, let's see here. Anybody else talking about anything else? Uh, oh, look, Ryan found it. Fantastic. Wonderful. Uh, <laughs> and Aaron says, well, <laughs> well, be. there's a little bracket in the box. See, you guys, you, you do your, this is why people watch unboxings, to find out what's in the box that they didn't even know is in the box that they have and never actually fully unboxed. Unbox your stuff, guys. You never know what's in there. All right. Let's see here. Anything else going on? Uh, people talking about some audio glitches in live shows. Sorry about that. The, the recorded one will hopefully have none of those problems. Um, Bernstein is talking about that Aki adapter that is basically a USB sound card. Yeah, and I did, so the one that I had on here, this is from a company called Aki, A-U-K-E-Y. This one is a Sabrent, 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 Sabrent. Same idea. Like I said, they're under 10 bucks. They totally work. I, it's so funny. This one's labeled with a pink and a green. Anybody who's a PC user probably already knows which is which. Um, as a Mac user, we didn't have these color-coded things on there. And this one doesn't, isn't actually labeled. So I put a little label on mine. Pink equals mic. There are hieroglyphs on this one, on the Aki one, but there are not hieroglyphs on the Severant one, which is which is a, a clever little useless uh, omission. Uh, let's see here. Anybody else in here? Um, Aaron says, I'd be concerned about the audio quality of that little USB thingy since it's a super cheap AD converter. And Burns replies with, the Aki is fairly decent for its cost and what it is. I've used them in a pinch when setting up computers for no sound drivers. So, you know, it works. It may not be the best quality thing in the world, but it, it, it works. It works. And... Uh, Oh, there we go. Jake's got a question. Excellent. Whew. I thought we were going to not have any questions today. It'd be impossible. The AF, the AF, that's the adjustment, the output adjustment, on the Sennheiser receiver is an analogous, and I can speak, analogous to the main level on a mixer. Oh, there you go. The sensitivity on the transmitter is more analogous to the channel gain. Try transmitter sensitivity down, AF, up. Well, there you go. You can try mixing and matching them. I always, my thought always, and Jake, by all means, correct me if I'm wrong, but my thought was always that you take your your receipt, your transmitter pack and you take that up as high as you can before peaking. So, you know, peaking, then back off one or two steps. Obviously, you, if you peak here, you're toast. But you want it to be putting out as strong of a signal as you can. And then on the receiver end, you adjust its output to your camera or whatever you're plugging it into um, until it also is not peaking, but as loud as it can be without peaking. But that was always my my kind of way that I was taught to do it. So if I'm wrong, then Jake, that's why we're here. You can tell me what I'm doing wrong, but that's always what I thought. Um, and if you if you mix them up, you go the other way and you get good sound, then all that matters at the end of the day is that you get good sound. But that was what that was the way I was taught to do things. So Jake is going to tell me if I am wrong or not. Um, incidentally, I didn't mention this, but the mic that I'm using for the show today is a different mic. I don't have the box handy. I'm going to do a thing on it later. Uh, but this is a wired, a very inexpensive wired XLR microphone, which is great uh, because I needed the wireless ones for this. And if you need a second mic in a pinch, um, so I'll, I can't, I'd walk over there, but I'm completely tethered in, so I can't get it. But there's a, it's, I'll do a show on that another day. Um, no one has corrected me yet on the, uh, on my setup, so hopefully that means I'm doing it right, or Jake has fallen asleep. One of the two. Well, this is this is a very anticlimactic q and I'm, I'm saying, I'm, I must say. So I think it's going to be time to... Oh, there we go. Jake says, you're not wrong. Oh, good. Huh. You might have to do it the other way to get a strong enough signal from the receiver for the app to recognize. Okay, so you can go the other way. Um, I, I Again, I thought quality-wise, it's better not to go that way. But if it works, it works. But um, as we saw, given the fact that if we brought the Sennheiser levels down too much, that we just lost signal completely going to the iPhone, I'd be very reluctant to rely on that in, in a actual live shooting situation. I would want something that's a lot more solid and is going to work. 
Um, Aaron says, I suppose you could also use a more expensive USB audio inter interface as well. Sure, absolutely. I'm going for what works and is super portable, um, obviously inexpensive, and it does work. I've used it a bunch, and um, I've never had a problem with this USB configuration, so I think it's a pretty good solid way to go. Okay. Like, oh, here's another one. Lucid says, any alternatives for bringing XLR audio into the iPhone, um, and is there any point for bringing XLR audio? Oh, I am sure, I know, actually, is it Rode? I think Rode makes a lightning to XLR adapter. So if you, that's going to be your easiest way to get XLR in. So that would be another option, right? Because the Sennheiser has an XLR, it comes with an XLR plug. Um, it's right here. So the Sennheiser comes with the one that I was using here. So this is your Sennheiser to mini jack. It also comes with a Sennheiser, to, which is just a mini jack, to XLR. Um, so yes, you could use an XLR to lightning adapter. That's actually a very, very good way to do it. Um, I was highlighting this because every wireless mic pack is going to have this option. This is going to be an alternative that's only going to be on the higher end packs. But no, that's a very good point. There is absolutely an XLR to lightning adapter on the market. And I think Rode makes it. Um, I could be wrong on that part, but it's out there. I'm sure if you Google lightning to XLR, you'll, you'll find it. Burns Tech, do those USB lightning adapters power the USB type A and charge the phone? Yes. Wait, do they power, do they power the USB? Do those USB like, okay, you're, wait, we're talking about this thing. It will charge the phone. That it will do. I'm not sure what you mean by power the type A. Oh, will it send power to this? Oh, no. The power to this comes from the phone. You don't need power here. I haven't checked though to see, like, I don't know how much power comes out of it. I don't know if there's a limit to what you can power. I'm pretty sure, ooh, could be wrong here, but I'm pretty sure that you can take some hard drives, USB hard drives, plug them into this, plug them into your iPad, Access that through special software. I, you know, that's not something I've ever done. It's designed for card readers, but it works for this as well. So there you go. But you can power it. When I've done, um, I guess, well, I've powered it on the air here for things before. I have the other one of these. It's HDMI, which also has power, and I'll use that to to HDMI out and power in, keep everything charged all at the same time. So there you go. Burn says, I asked this because some USB audio devices need power, and I'm not sure if it was enough. Yeah, I don't. I don't think you get, as far as I know, you don't get additional power to the USB if you plug in power via the lightning, but it would be something to check. Um, I, I can't say unequivocally whether it does or doesn't, but you'll have to try it. Sorry, I don't have an answer for that. Uh, Jake says, Rode iXLR is the XLR to iOS adapter. There you go. It's nice because it also has a headphone jack for monitoring. Oh, cool. Oh, so that might be a really good solution as well. Well, there you go. So an alternative solution. I will actually include that in the uh, in the kit setup because um, that's, a, that's a nice little setup. Okay. All right. That now is the end of it. Hopefully that was fun and educational for you guys today. Uh, I had fun racing through that thing. I got through all my points and I did it in like record time. Much better than the old video that everybody complained about being too long. Okay, I'm out of here. Take care of yourselves, everybody. We'll see you back here on Friday. Bye-bye.